more than Traniacs. That was a 2250 meter recovery floaty pants swim. Love it. So I got in last night from a trip to Lanzarote where the very last workout I rode side by side with Patrick Langa for 90 minutes until they dropped me like a bad habit. He's chatty. I learned a lot. I wrote down a bunch of the things that we talked about and I think I've got 10 really good takeaways from Patrick Langa, directly from the dude. It is nice to be back in the pain cavern. Well, Trainiacs, let's get into these 10 lessons that I learned from Patrick over the week in Lanzarote. And yes, I am in PPJ mode, permanent pajama mode. So let's just start off with three training things that I picked up from Patrick. Now these are fairly simple and then we'll get into the more philosophical stuff. So number one, at an hour 10 minutes into the ride, I started taking in calories and Patrick looks over to me and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm taking calories. And he said, no, no calories, nothing besides water for the first three hours. I get what he's going after. There are studies that show that the ability to burn fat as fuel plays as much as a 50% role in the variation of how well or poorly you do in a race. My response to Patrick was, how long have you been doing that? And he said, my entire life. I am just starting on this fasted, lower calories, more high fat, low carb, get off the sugar kind of thing. And it takes a long time to adjust to this. I'm gonna talk about it more in a podcast. Bottom line, as I was looking around at the dozen athletes that were about to drop me, none of them were taking in a lot of sugar on that ride. They did really well and there's a lot to it. Next thing, this is pretty cool. This is, I need to demonstrate. As I started taking in those calories, I was trying to like uh, 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 on an energy bar and Patrick took it and he said, watch, I'll show you a trick. And picture this as an energy bar. He grabbed it, had a little bit of the butt end sticking out and he just went boom, boom, boom on his handlebars, popped out the top, totally good. I liked that, that was pretty cool. And the final training tip that is fairly simple is he said when you are doing a cold water swim, even if you have a wetsuit on, he hates being cold, I hate being cold. So he said right before the race, take a cup of warm water, you can do this with a thermos, and if you have a supportive Sherpa around, just ditch the thermos to them, take that warm water and put it down your wetsuit because what happens is Instead of your body getting a whole bunch of cold water in the wetsuit when you go into the water and then the heat getting sucked out of your body to warm up that water, it basically, it ends up being like even Steven. So your body retains more heat. All right, let's get into the philosophical stuff. And the first thing that he mentioned, this comes from Kona Ironman champion who is now Patrick's coach, Ferris Al Sultan. He works on weaknesses. Makes no sense just to try to get, let's say if you're really strong on the bike, stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger on the bike. Meanwhile, your limiters are holding you back and no matter how strong you get on the bike, your floor of performance never really gets lifted up. So work on your weaknesses. It's quite the opposite of what most of us do, but it's important to spend time on those weaknesses and likely what'll happen is your floor of performance will get better. And I remember early on in my career where I hated doing swimming, just period, swimming. And eventually I worked on it and worked on it and dissected it and rebuilt my entire swim program, which you can get for free at triathlonterran.com forward slash swim drill program. And all of a sudden, swimming was one of my favorite things and one of the things that I was better at in a race. Next, don't be too focused on the outcome. What Patrick says he started getting away from when he first became a full-time pro triathlete is that he stopped putting pressure on himself to perform. 
He just wanted to go to a race and trust that he had put in the work. And what he said is that when you have so much pressure on yourself to perform really well, that's negative energy. It's just the same as getting stressed in a race about your execution of that race, if it's going well, if it's not going well. And if you aren't as relaxed as Patrick looks in every single race, you're not going to perform as well as you possibly can because you're not putting that energy into the execution of the race. You are putting it into the stress of performing in that race. This is a bit of a life tip, but sometimes you have to take a risk and see what you're capable of. And this is in personal life or in sports. When Patrick became a full-time pro triathlete in 2016, he had been kicking around as a part-time pro for about 10 years, really not doing a whole lot in the sport. And then at one point he said, I'm either going to have to leave the sport or I'm going to take a year and see what I can do. Well, what happens? Well, he ends up breaking the run course record in Kona coming in third in that race, changing his entire life, the next year becoming a Kona champion, the year after becoming a two-time Kona champion, going from relatively unknown pro to one of the best all-time to race in Kona. And if he hadn't taken that chance, regardless of what the outcome was, he wouldn't have found out what he was capable of. So whether it's in a race, whether it is in life, sometimes you just have to, even if it's temporary, take a risk and see what happens. There's lots of bad crap that's happened to you in your life that I'm sure didn't happen from you taking a risk that could result in a good thing. So why not take a risk that could result in a good thing? And hey, if something bad happens, well, bad stuff happens all the time. It's not really a change in your situation, but at least you saw what the outcome was. Well, this next one was kind of interesting to hear and Nice to hear, we had a little heart to heart on the bike. Patrick said that he gets his future wife, Julia, to manage a lot of his social media comments. I get No Triathlon Kim to manage a lot of our social media comments because I was finding that this was about a year ago, I actually had like a bit of a breakdown day where I said, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't think it's worth it because every single day there was at least one comment that really stuck in me and, and really brought me down. And what Patrick said is the exact same thing that I said, that on average there's about 50 comments out there every single day that are really good and positive and uplifting, but it's the one comment that brings you down. And it's kind of cool to hear that that's what he goes through as a two-time world champion. And I think it's just to show that if you care about something and you care about people and you care about how you're perceived in the world and you want to just help people, it really does bother you. And it's actually, it was just kind of neat to hear that he's a normal person too. He's not high on this pedestal. Like, I don't care what you say, sucker. You don't matter to me because I'm a two-time world champion. No, two-time world champions get sad too. Second to last thing is to don't let your background hold you back from thinking what you are capable of. Patrick was telling me about how hard he played as a kid. He had a broken leg and one leg is two centimeters, still to this day, shorter than the other. He had a swollen up SI joint that was so big and swollen in his lower back that he barely could move for weeks on end. He had a dog bite rip a scar into his face that he still has today, but he still loves dogs. On and on and on, scars here and he like all over his body. And you would think that given all that, he wouldn't even try to test himself. The guy has a two centimeter discrepancy, almost a one inch difference in leg length. And here he is breaking run course records. So no matter what your background is, you think maybe Patrick is like, eh, well, physically he was here, but now he's <laughs> So what if even you're down here but you can get to there and you can get to be good. Don't let your background hold you back because in Patrick's case, that would have meant that he didn't like dogs to this day. Then I couldn't be friends with him. Final thing is to trust yourself. In 2018, when he went out onto the run with T.O. and Braden Curry, 
he went out at a 330 per kilometer pace because they went out at a 330 per kilometer pace and he looked at his watch and he went, this is insane. And then he tried to keep up. Next kilometer, 325. At that point to himself, he thought, this is insane. This is blow up pace. He knew that even when he broke the run course record, he wasn't going that fast at the start. So what did he do? He let them run away, fully away. And here he is, Patrick Langa, the best runner in the field, letting his competitors run away because he trusted in himself and knew that if he just stuck to his plan, that he could execute really well. So he didn't let other people get the better of him. And whether that's in a race or in life, you have to trust your preparation and know that whatever you've done is the best that you can do. And as long as you stay to that plan and execute really well, sometimes take a little bit of a risk, but not stupid risks because you let other people get the better of you. What happened? 2018, the man wins again, being the fastest person ever to race in Kona. Pretty good, right? Now, on that note, I have to go and send Patrick's wetsuit back to him because I was so strapped for time leaving Lanzarote that I didn't have time to take it back to the, uh, the club to give to Patrick. So I gotta overnight this to him, like too sweet. He loves the dogs though, right? He loves you. We like you too, Patrick. Pete, he had your fur in his beard during a podcast. And Gracie, he called you very cuddly. I am very cuddly. Sorry, my dad took your wetsuit. I am sorry. All right, let's send it off. If you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. And if you are subscribed, tell me your favorite lesson from Patrick Lange. Lights. Tell me your favorite lesson of those 10 from Patrick Lange. Good guy.